Welcome back to the reality, guys. I'm your host, Billy Blinks, joined as always by my co-host, Brian. Hello. We are here to cover the season premiere of season 18 of The Bachelorette, which aired tonight, Tuesday, October 19th. So this was Michelle Williams. We covered in our preview. If you haven't seen our preview special, check back on the link. We'll have a link below. We went through Brian and myself and we went through and picked who we thought would be the winner of the season and who we thought would be the bachelor out of this season because we did see rumors and we don't go into spoilers on the show. Just a heads up. If this is the first time you've ever seen us, um, they're out there. If you want them, we ask that in our comments and stuff that you guys leave it out of them. If, if you're watching this in a Facebook group where spoilers are allowed, then obviously go for it. But try not to spoil it for people if you're here and we're going through the journey with us how we are. But, you know, to each their own. Um, the reason I bring that up is kind of off the top, man. One of my picks was in real hot water. My pick was in the hottest water besides getting kicked out of the show right off the top. We're talking about our boy Joe, right? Yep. Minneapolis so, own. Oh, man. So, Joe, if you did, if did see our preview special, I thought Joe, it could be a blessing or a curse that they were basically from the same. They were from the same state, but I was assuming maybe the same area. I did a little Google mapping and seeing they weren't too far away. And I'm like, there's a lot of similarities which could really help this guy. But like, maybe if they know each other or if, he used to date someone she knows or vice versa. It can really screw him. Man, I did not see the fact that this dude, she recognized him right off the bat. She's like, I know you. And he's like, um, maybe. Not only did they know each other, she slid into his DMs and he ghosted her, dude. Yeah, he definitely knew as soon as he. Oh, oh, dude. I was like, come on. Uh. We also cover other shows. We cover Survivor. We cover things like The Challenge, F-Boy Island, Sexy Beast, Temptation Island. And I bring that up because Brian, his pick for Survivor for the ongoing season 41 of Survivor, he was eliminated in week two. Yeah, no, week one. <laughs> it was week one. It was our, back, week our backup was week two. <laughs> His backup week two. So I was like, there's no way that my pick for the winner is going to be gone week one. And listen, we'll get to it, but he wasn't, he wasn't, he got as close as you could get to being eliminated. But for somebody, you know, we're in season two of the reality guys. And I'm like, God damn it, man. I, we're going to look like a bunch of slapped asses so early on that we can't pick shit right at all. The, curse. the reality guys curse. Um, so let's get into it. Obviously, like we said, Michelle Williams, she is, was on Matt James's season. We really enjoyed her. Matt James's season is close to our hearts because that was the first season we covered on the reality guys. So it's nice to kind of see some of the players, like we said, Katie, look at me players making the basketball puns that I was worried about. And um, Michelle now getting their crack at their own seasons. And I think they're both deserving. Um, Michelle's 28 years old. Like we mentioned when talking about Joe, she is from Minnesota. She is a teacher. She also was a basketball player collegiately D1 in Minnesota. I still don't think they've confirmed the college. So I don't know yeah, if it's like University of Minnesota, Minnesota State. Maybe we can look that up during the episode there, Brian. We get a little Google. Yeah, um, the thing I was worried about, and also check us out on Twitter. Um, I'm at Billy underscore blinks. Uh, Brian, what are you? Um, TH Real Brian Volk with a zero as the, as the O. We'll have those linked. Obviously, we do every episode in the description below. But the reason I bring that up is Brian and I have adopted, at least to begin this season, we're going to watch some of the episodes live and live tweet them. And we had a really kind of good interaction going with some people we've never met. And it was really cool. So we're going to continue that. We also have an Instagram that we're going to have some interaction with as well. So we like to bring that up. Um, Bradley I mean, University. Yeah. Where? Bradley University. I would never have guessed uh, that. never heard of that. No, the one the Joe, actually, I think if Joe was the one I was saying was the basketball player. The other guy was a basketball player literally played for University of Minnesota. Like the pretty. Legit. Yeah, I mean, that's 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 Big Ten. I mean, that's legit. That's pretty good. Yeah, I mean, they make the tournament. They obviously show some intro stuff, and I usually don't cover the intro. We don't usually cover the intro intro stuff, but we had our <laughs> we were talking about at the top some planted drama. So Ryan 30 
Tasha and Caitlin go to some of the guys rooms to kind of do early meet and greets, which never happens. So you already know there's something weird happening. They tell him he has to leave the room. I'm like, all right. Then they find a, a folder, a big conspicuous red folder in his opened up suitcase that says the bachelorette and has pages and pages and pages of notes, apparently like Hunter on steroids from last season. That's who you reminded me of. This was obviously fake, right? Like there. Yeah, I, I just think this is a little blown out of proportion. It seems like. The only there's the only way that this isn't fake is that like this guy actually did have his friends and they said his friend's wife helped him out with it and they set it all up and like he dumb like mistakenly mentioned it to a producer and they ratted him out. I could see that happening, obviously, or this was just a plant situation and he was coming in from the beginning. I want to get people's thoughts on that, honestly. I'm going to post that even in like the episode description, but when the comments guys here on Facebook or on the video below. Do you guys think it was a producer plant or this guy's an idiot and mentioned it to a producer and then that all came up? I'm going to text Kristen too. Um, a friend, Kristen Vars, if this is your first time watching, is a bachelor expert, has watched all the seasons and knows a lot of behind the scenes stuff. So this is the kind of thing that like I actually really want to know because it seemed, regardless, it's definitely manufactured in some sense. And I just don't think you need it that early. Why didn't you save the folder for like week three yeah, or four? Yeah, I was thinking episode three is when we got our Thomas. Yeah, like why do we, dude? Do we, do we think remember Ryan... when we were talking about Thomas being a bad guy? That guy yeah. right now is about not to be engaged. Guy. He has a stable relationship. He's not trying to get back on the Bachelor franchise. Right. Like that's what you got to watch with these witch hunts that these dudes pull. The White Knight effect. Like they gotta chill and. The preview for the season didn't show a lot of white knighting. I think they're going to be sussing Joe out. It sounds like like the previous relationship stuff, but that, I mean, there's going to be one of them per season. We just know. Yeah, that and they, they kept like showing like Brandon Jay's face when they were talking about this, but it's like, I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> Ryan, future bachelor. <laughs> Mine was, my pick was Clayton, the big goofball hey, guy. I was a uh, Rodney and Clayton and both of them look like they're making it kind of far. So they actually might be, they were both in the preview. Yeah. Clayton was crying. Clayton yeah. was crying. Like if you could do a part where you're crying, that's yeah. pretty good. Yeah. I, we did well there. I think so. So let's get into the introductions. We'll power through a lot of these because there are a lot of them, but we'll obviously comment on the notables. First yeah. guy was Nate though. We really liked Nate. Yeah. I like Nate. He has a much longer name an actual name. And he came in with better Nate than never. Yeah, corny, Respect. but um, we yes. and like I re- like the fact that we did that preview of who we thought mm-hmm. anyone we said anyone that played basketball was going to be like could go far in this. And I mean, t- what we saw today, she picked a lot of dudes that played basketball. A so lot of tall like, dudes on this season. Yeah, yeah. a lot of tall dudes. Uh, second guy was oh, hated him, Romeo. Corny. Will you be my Juliet? Hopefully it's not a tragedy. Why would you say that, dude? Like, all right, next guy. Jack Russell, like the dog. Uh, yeah. Compa- Gross do- Comparing yourself to a dog is not usually a good thing. Because usually a dog, when a girl says a guy's a dog, is usually like not a good it's not something <laughs> he said tug of war, don't play tug of war with my heart. That's dumb. Uh Clayton. Uh, brought her a yardstick for bad behavior and let her spank Dude, him. L. I mean, I tweeted that was it. That was one of the worst ones. That was really, really, really bad. Cringe. Super cringe. Then we power through a couple quick ones. Jamie, chill and positive. She liked him. We talked about Jamie in the preview special. We thought he was someone we were, I was contemplating picking too. So he was up there for me. And we just said he was too rich. Like, we said he was too. Yeah, he's a CEO. He said he's going to be too fancy. The, the world to get some food chris g a uh, motivational speaker with the horrible corny flower in the field line that might have been the worst one oh, honestly. oh yeah well yeah okay him and clayton two Malik, nothing crazy alec boring will spoke spanish and she liked that but that's as, as it goes par deep with a dopamine on fire line because he's a neuroscientist 
all those were just nothing, nothing to, like those four, that. those five right there. Blah. The next one is the next one's pretty good. Chris S comes in on the school bus. He yeah, goes, Ulu. What? Ulu was between Pardeep and Chris. Oh, so who was it? Um, that was the the guy that's the name we can't always. Oh, Illuminate. Yeah. What? How did he, he come the, in? Uh, he had a basketball pun. He had an NBA pun. That's why I wrote that on specifically because I if we're keeping. Okay. Yeah. I, I. So I mean, I have to add one pun, but I do have a pun count, so I'll let you know at the end there. Um. Okay, cool. So then that means now we go to, yes. to Chris S. He had a good line. He said, you give me an A, I'll give you a D. Yeah. Clever, good line. clever, clever. Good clever. line. Good line. Uh, but this is where I realized I went wrong. So I was very worried about basketball puns, and there ended up being eight basketball puns that I counted, just plus or minus, probably like one and a half, but that still gets me under the dozen line that I set for the over-under. Way more teacher puns. Yeah, a lot of teacher puns. I teacher puns. <laughs> next week we'll set a teacher pun. <laughs> We're gonna do a teacher pun count because the teacher puns I way way forgot about. Like I, that's on me. That's on me. <laughs> um, LT shows up with no pants on. Yeah, I, I mean I have a couple here that I did like between LT um, Garrett. He got eliminated. He had a cane because he broke his foot. <laughs> Okay. And like Taisha and uh, what's her face were like, Caitlin. Is that real Kane? Like, it just would that crack me up. Um, Casey, the old guy, he said something weird. I just have yikes written down. I don't remember what he did. Uh, yeah, um, I skipped I skipped Casey. The Brandon, the, you missed, Brandon K had the Mardi Gras beads. Yeah. I'm corny, but it was it was uh it was it was clever. That one's not bad. That's one. See, that one's not bad. That's why I'm glad we both did. I don't mean to like. Cut. I know you guys. No, are- no, no. You cut LT. this. Is, you cut in all the time. Trust me, LT. because I have yeah, imperfect that notes. Rough. That one was rough. Um. So then, did you next one we have? Do you have is the creepy diner cart? Uh. Yeah. Well. We. Yeah. We. Lt. Weird. Weird. Speedo. Um. Banana hammock. And then uh, yeah, Rick. Okay, there's a creepy diner cart that comes out like you would see in an old fashioned movie, in like a train or something. And obviously there's a person under there. You had the right uh, comparison when you texted me. What did you say he was? He was James. He's James from last year. He is the box guy. He's James. Uh, also famous if you've seen our coverage of bachelor in paradise he was the one at the end who he was unlucky throughout ended yeah. up meeting his best friend and aaron and they dipped together and now are roommates in san diego so we think we'll see james again in paradise but yeah this dude completely he was one of the guys that completely committed to his little shtick oh. he he stayed in the dinner cart for most of the evening i also think he has eyeliner on i was gonna just say like I compared him to James. James is a billion times better looking than this guy. Oh, and he yeah. also looks like he just ate like a uh like six raw eggs. He's got like those like glassy like eyes, like he does. Know, he looks, <laughs> yeah, not a, looks he like looks, he's got eyeliner on. He looks super weird. <laughs> uh, okay, so Ryan, the guy with the notes, he shows up in an ice cream chuck, which I thought was kind of cool. Yeah, no, good. That's clever. Double scoop of love, not a bad pun. She seemed into him. And then, you know, that means he's going to be in trouble. Dude, why? And here's what I think. Like, I don't want to skip ahead, but like once like she was done with these intros, why didn't they tell her then? You know what I mean? It's almost like they let this thing happen where she connected with him and then they tell her. like that to me is why I kind of am with you where I think it's a little set up. Brian, are you telling me? That you think the producers of The Bachelorette would manipulate someone's emotions and play with them like that? How dare you? How dare? Obviously, dude. I mean, come on. These people are, they're probably pretty much pieces of shit, to be honest. Sorry. I'm sorry, Bachelor producers who are watching. I, I mean, you probably have to be. But you guys are kind of scummy, too. You guys are scummy. If they can't have the like the cursing and the fighting, then that's probably how they have to do it. Mm, it's true. Listen, I don't hate on anybody. You got to put food on your table. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so next up. Hey, Rodney. Rodney. The Rodney, which we ended up there. We ended up learning a lot about apples. So Rodney came in the apple costume and said that he was a Granny Smith apple. Yeah, that's a chop. 
Turns out Granny Smith apples are green. Yeah, he's an idiot. She named like 30 apples. Dude, if you like apples. How do you like them apples? She, she was like jazz. jazz apples are good. She was like Bubba from Bubba. um Forrest Gump naming off shrimp fucking types, except with apples. I honestly didn't know there were that many types. I, I thought of somebody that used to work for me. Um she was obsessed with apples and like like reminded me of Michelle right there, just naming off apples and judging you on what apples you did like. So Rodney wouldn't last. What's the pizza maker's name? Peter. Peter. Peter the pizza preneur. I did like what he did. He's just like, yo, fuck this. <laughs> Is that a pizza? I was fine with him. I was fine with no, him. I thought later, it was he, later he <laughs> makes him eat a fun. cannoli. Yeah, right. Yeah. I I yeah. I kind of like him, unfortunately. No, I like him too, but he's not <laughs> going anywhere. He might be he might hang for a little while, but he ain't going nowhere. Yeah. Okay, the next stop part's great. The Let's next go. two, next two are great. All right, first though, Daniel. Daniel's a firefighter, so we we, we liked Daniel in the previews. Yeah, dude. And Daniel looked, was really dope. dope. He looked a little more like jacked. He, yeah, he did. Him. He looked like Andrew Ress a little bit. Yeah, from KD yeah. season, and he came in, rolled in. It was funny. He had the little toy fire truck because he's a firefighter, and he was having trouble getting up, and he was being vulnerable and stuff. But then. PJ rolls in. Cool PJ. He's got his own real fire truck. I fire man. <laughs> real fire truck. If you're noticing that I'm wearing a denim jacket, it's because my boy PJ, you know, in his audition tape, in his thing, he's wearing a cool denim jacket. And, you know, we're both cool guys. You know, we're both got main character energy. And he walks up like, uh, like shaft, like just like a smooth mother. And she's like, and then she's like, oh, you know, another firefighter came. He's like, not like me. <laughs> <laughs> this dude is just so cool. So cool, dude. He's so cool. And so we are and like, if you saw again, we talked about the preview special. We picked PJ as like our like our group backup. So he's yeah. who we're rooting for. We just somehow somehow feel like he's gonna not. He would be great on yeah. Paradise. Yeah, he would. Oh my! I need him to just last sure. long enough. Oh yeah. my God, rolling in smooth. So yeah, no PJ's. We you know we think PJ will last a little while. Big fan of PJ. I was like uh, uh like worshiping him on Twitter. Like uh, we there. need to find him on Twitter. Okay, so PJ rolls in. Brandon J. I hate Brandon J. Dude, he rolls on the bed. Like might be my least kind of clever. He's like my least favorite, I think, though. Jamari, I loved. He did like the Hulk sleeves. Yeah, he ripped his sleeves off. I thought that was really funny. Huh. Edward does some weird holistic bowl bullshit. I, if I was Michelle, I would have just sent him home right there. That was we. <laughs> We said Clayton's and uh, whoever's were bad, but this one was just plain weird. No, that's that dude. That's definitely the snap moment. This dude, that dude, go, yeah. Dude, that guy, his suit selection was bad. Like his hair selection was bad. It's just not not a good look for that dude. Um, couple of quick ones there. Leroy Polaroid selfie. That's my boy. That's why I picked the win. Yep, I like, I like that it. Polaroid selfie. Was cool. Martin does a backflip. Joe, we talked about Joe at the top of the show. She rolled into his DMs. He goes there. She's pissed. Yeah, we'll get there. We said, like, yeah, he's not eliminated, but there's a reckoning coming for Joe at some point. I am not. If this were one of those sports bet tickets right now, Bri, I would totally sell my ticket in for a loss right now. Wait, like, really? But, like, oh, for the whole thing? For the whole thing. There is no oh, okay, shot yeah. my pick's going to win. Yeah, no. Shot, he makes it to the. He might make it far, but he's not gonna, he's gonna win. make it far. He's kissing her on the mound at a Twins game. Yeah, they might get the hometowns. I just, I just not feeling close. And I could be, I, it could change. I'm not feeling confident in my pick. I'm not gonna yeah, change nah, my pick. That's not how it works. But like, reasoning, like uh, his reasoning, like 
I get, but like, like she said, just like say, like, it's not a good time. She, yeah, with the George Floyd stuff and all, but she literally lives like in the same town as him. She, she basically yeah. was like, I live closer yeah, to it than you do. And he was like, oh, fuck. You know, yeah. He, like she says, she's just like, just tell me it's not a good time. That's fine. Yeah. Like, I'm, you don't have to ghost me. Right. I'm, a, I'm a TV star. You don't ghost me. Um, then they tell, I gotta get into like the, I, my notes, I jumped to like into like the cocktail party kind of stuff yeah, at this point. Kind of, yes, um, sure. my main notes, and you can jump in with things that you thought were funny. They wheel Rick around all time goofy out in the cart. He finally gets out of the cart. He still definitely has eyeliner on. I think he's a weirdo. He talked so weird. much this episode. Yeah. He, yeah, you know, he kind of reminds me of, um, who was the dude with the kid in Katie's? Oh, uh, Michael. Yeah, just the way he kept talking. And I, but I'll tell you what, Bill. I love that they interviewed him like they did James in the like just the table. Like that picture is great. Like that's the I, I we shit on the producers, but the sh- producers doing that, mwah, love it. No, that's they. Fun. I love it. Listen, like they definitely told him he couldn't get out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're in here. You're in here until Ryan. We eliminate Ryan in a few hours. <laughs> Um, this is where I put Michelle knows a lot about apples. Ryan and her talk again. They have a great connection, and that's when Tasha and Caitlin swoop in with the fucking news that he's got a shit ton of notes on how to behave, what not to like, how to what to say, what not to say. She instantly confronts him. This th- these guys are getting a very early taste of what it's like to lose out on time. They're oh, going to yeah. learn very quickly. That's going to happen to them. Man, Michelle's pissed off. She makes the dude go all the way up to the room. She kicks him out of the room. She goes through all the notes. Now, listen, she had to go through a million pages of notes, like a goddamn national treasure movie to find the stuff that Tasha and Caitlin just instantly found in the folder. Right. Wouldn't have been great if she was reading the notes like this, Bill, and then like a producer, like, like the one of the notes just comes out of nowhere and like puts it right there. Hand. Hand from behind her. <laughs> this is the one you need to read. Oh, I found it. This is the one they're talking about. So Ryan's dead in the water and she eliminates him. Mm-hmm. Week one, again, I think we would I think it would have been better if they let them simmer a little bit longer and like we get this as like a bombshell or they just like yeah, pull it out of his bag one day and leave it sitting out or something like yeah. that. Or, or his roommate finds it. That yeah, exactly. Better. He gets tipped off. Like something like that would have been Mwah. that. Yeah, I want yeah, that. I agree. Um, Maybe nothing was happening this episode. They needed something. It's probably what it is. Nate is definitely making a really good connection with her. They sit down for a while. He talks about his life. She obviously is giving a lot of good body language towards him. And he gets the first impression rose and a kiss. Yeah. Not Lance. bad for week one. Yeah, that's that's a winner. Bri, any other notable things that you wanted to talk about on the cocktail party before we go to the rose ceremony? Uh, I don't think so. I think we pretty much covered a lot of stuff. Um, uh, just some of the, like, just because I want to touch on my boy Leroy. Look, like, yeah. what I was a little annoyed about this Ryan situation is my boy Leroy was having a good moment. There's he had the pictures that he took printed out showing her. They look she looked like she was enjoying it. And Tysha and what's her name again? Caitlin. Yeah, Tysha and Caitlin can break that party up. And I'll, I'll tell you what, I was pissed. How do you feel uh, about our hosts again this season? Non-existent. Don't do anything for me. They're just they, they're just friends to me. They just remind me of like just background characters, NPCs. You would say they're NPCs. <laughs> They just have like, they don't, they don't do, they do the one thing as a host where it's like, this is the last rose. But other than that, they don't really do anything. They're, they're kind like, of, they're like stupid comedy relief. That's not they're funny. like your wife's friends that are in their group chat, but instead the group chats, they're physically just standing there. Yeah. It's saying they're not funny. And <laughs> it's just I'm not saying that uh, what's his face was any better at being funny, but it's just like, Make them more like hosts. I think that, like, the, I think I'm blaming this on the producers. I'm not blaming this on that. No, it's not their fault. And like I said, like, Tasha, like, it said, she's hosted things like Entertainment Tonight and things where I've seen and she does really well. It's just not giving them a ton to do. Yeah, because there's not a lot to do. 
again, it's a lot of these shows. They don't do a lot of things. That's why people is people you might think they're goofy for like missing Chris Harrison and stuff like that. It was just part of the show. You know, it, it's like Survivor. You've w- just watched 10 seasons of Survivor. Jeff Probst is just part of Survivor. It's just part right. of the deal. Like those guys, but the thing about those guys that we adore is they're actually like grilling these people and asking the hard questions. I, they, Tasha and Kaylin are not doing that. They're like, hey, can we go in your room? Can you leave? I we think find more your, seasons um, we get back into like one away from COVID and two away from how the Bachelor franchise was like a toxic wasteland a few seasons ago. I think the longer we go and if the franchise continues on, maybe we get a little bit back more into that, but they need to find a permanent host. Now we know we have Jesse Palmer for the bachelor season. That's currently filming. I don't know if he's going to do the bachelorette or if they're going to keep bringing Tasha and Caitlin back. I'd like for them to get one host that does both and build up some seasons in a row and then can build some cred. So yeah, I, listen, nothing against them, but I just said, I don't think they're the right ones for this job now that we've watched a bunch of seasons okay the rose ceremony so yep. like we said uh nate already has his rose so he will not be worried about and then obviously we already had orion being eliminated the following men received roses jamie leroy martin rick clayton peter pj let's go boy let's go let's go let's go malik Romeo, Daniel, Brandon J, Will, Chris S, Rodney, who is still dressed as an apple. Yeah, respect. Alec, Pardeep, which I thought was a surprise. Yeah. Chris S, Casey, Illumide, LT, and Joe. Yeah, Joe. We made it to week two, people. Yeah, I, I made it to week two. I think it was a, like a you're you're gonna be like. I, I, I like Leroy, but I, I didn't see enough of him to know how I feel about him. Mm-hmm. Fully, but Joe's probably going to make it deep, I think. Um, so these are the unfortunate gentlemen that were eliminated. Like we said previously, Ryan sent home early. Joe Mari, Edward, Brian, Garrett, Brandon K, Ryan, and Jack. So... Usually, we've someone we've seen in paradise guys that get eliminated or girls get eliminated like in the first week, one or two of them end up showing up in paradise. If they, if the producers had thought they were going to be somebody good and just didn't really get a lot of time because of the connection, so we may see some of these people in the future. I know we'll definitely see some people from this season in paradise, but maybe we'll even see some of these people eliminated. Last thing, obviously, we always cover the preview. I didn't take the notes on the preview. Um, overall, this preview seemed a little less dramatic than some of the p- previous season previews we've seen in which I think makes sense because Michelle is kind of a real person. So I don't think we're going to get outrageous, like her freaking out a ton. Um, but what were your impressions of the season preview? Um, not enough PJ, your boys in a lot. I didn't see Leroy, unfortunately. Um, a lot of it looks like they're in Minnesota a lot. They're in the uh, Viking Stadium. They're in a tweet. <laughs> the Vikings came running out. That was funny. Well, I was saying she was kicking a field goal. That's why I really noticed it. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd like to know the distance of how she does it. So I'd like to know if I could maybe beat that. But um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I'm excited mm-hmm. about it. Like, we'll see. I don't know. Like you said, like if they're traveling, like all this stuff is smoke screen. Like the other times, like you knew they're in the same place. Mm-hmm. So like. You don't know how far these dates go. Like this, we don't know if it's like next week. <laughs> you yeah, I mean, like you don't know. So like, it's kind of tough to gauge. Like, but I kind of like Joe as a pick. I had Rodney as a future bachelor, so that's not bad for me. Mm-hmm. He was in a couple of previews, and then um, you had Clayton. Clayton's in a lot of them too. So I guess the upside for our picks are not bad. Like, not bad like- so far. Well, we didn't lose anybody. Yeah, week right. One. Right. Which that's is not bad. Kevin didn't our- make any picks, which is unfortunate. But uh, I wish he did. So we can have a little bit. To be more. fair, Kevin hasn't even watched yet. So, like, I'd even be okay with him watching the first episode and, and then it. giving a pick. I mean, whatever. You know what yeah. I mean? Or even we just send him the list and tell him to make a pick before he catches up. Um, speaking of Kevin, Kevin will be back, obviously, for our next episode, which will be, is it episode four now of Survivor? Yeah. 
It'll be week four of season 41 of Survivor. So that'll be episode 15 of the reality guys. Um, and then depending on this week, how our schedules are going, we may have the challenge. Um, just a little behind the scenes. I am getting married, not this week, but at next weekend. So um, I will probably get the, uh, we'll probably most likely get bachelorette in Brian and myself, maybe Kevin, depending on schedule. Um, and then probably the rest of that week would probably be Brian and Kevin for survivor. And then for the following week or two, Brian will probably have to drive the boat here on bachelor, but we could also reach out to maybe uh, like Waleed or like uh, Kristen or someone who may be interested in coming on too. Who's watching it. I'll talk to Waleed. I think Waleed, if I told him I want him to cover for me while I'm out, I'm sure he would catch up. How long are you going? I leave that Monday and then I think I come back like the following like Wednesday or something like that. So honestly, depending on, I know the second Monday I'll be at like an all inclusive, like it's sandals in Antigua. So then we can literally like, it'll be, I might even like, depending on it, like jump in for a few minutes onto the zoom. You know what I mean? You won't. You remember I said the same thing when I was away. You're not. But yeah, but you never know. You're not <laughs> Who gonna. knows? Maybe we'll be fighting by then. It'll be like the White Lotus, and I'm already in a separate room because she realized I'm a crazy maniac. I'm married to you, but, but I need to. I need to report on this. I'm in, in Paris. I'm gonna, what if? What if I run into a like former contestant of The Bachelor or Bachelorette? Then I definitely have that to be, be like, you have to sit down with them, get the scoop. Um, yeah. this was an awesome. Uh, premiere i'm looking forward to the season um i really really enjoyed watching it live it definitely yeah, added to keep up with this it, yeah. add, it definitely added a lot and it definitely like we've talked about even for ourselves it does add that spacing for us for our week it doesn't we don't yeah. pile up on top of each other yeah, we're mid-week. Not, like, throwing a bunch of videos at you at once so but like i said please like and subscribe everything reality guys uh this is episode 14 episode 15 will be survivor But until then, for myself, Brian, Kevin, peace.